From now on, I would like to talk about the fourth industrial revolution in the fields related to shipping, shipbuilding, logistics, and fisheries. They are the pioneer in their fields who are the first to move to adopt the new technologies of the fourth industrial revolution. But companies in the shipping, shipbuilding, logistics, and fisheries sector are under more pressure to switch to green energy than the disruptive innovation we've been talking about. Nevertheless, digitalization and greener shipping in such sector disrupt the whole value chain of the industries. In order to understand the thought of companies of shore and sea industries, I review the technology trend for 2021. As a result, I can find out what kind of the technical trends they are. As you can see through this page, Shore logistics is filled with interest in a variety of forward-looking technologies. Technologies such as blockchain, big data, AI, IoT, robotics, cloud, and autonomous vehicles are predominant. However, if you, you look at the 2021 technology trend of shipping logistics, Shipping industry is more interested in market conditions, decarbonization due to climate change and energy change to respond to it. And blockchain and digital sensing are sometimes mentioned. The major characteristics are the green energy and decarbonization faced by the shipping industry. In conclusion, it can be seen that the shipping industry is relatively behind in innovation through new technology compared to the land logistic industry. As the IoT-related re industry expands and the sales increase, it is very important who will seize this opportunity first. The world's no number one shipping company, Musk, is more innovative than any other shipping company in this respect and a pioneer in the fastest changing shipping industry. Musk and IBM note that despite the complexity of the global trade ecosystem, cost and volume of the world trade continue to increase. In the midst of this difference in thinking on land and sea, Musk, the world's largest shipping company, and IBM first created the trade lands a platform using blockchain technology as follows. Those are the cost of global trade is estimated at 1.8 trillion US dollar per year, but it is possible to reduce the cost by about 10% through an efficient process. Over 16 trillion US dollar of goods are shipped annually for international trade. Products equivalent to 8% of global consumers are shipped by the shipping industry. By removing barriers to the international supply chain, international trade can increase by about 15%, revitalizing the economy and creating new jobs. In many cases, the administrative cost to transport is higher than the cost to transport the container. As you can see figure at the right side in this slide, the existing global trade network was disorderly flows and very inefficient and the paper-based process was very burdensome. In other words, the data were trapped in the organizational silos and most of the processes were manual and time-consuming. There was also a problem in transparency. Paced with those situations mentioned earlier, IBM and Musk create trade rent, an open and neutral supply chain platform poised to transform the industry. Through this platform, trade rent aims to provide various benefits to participants throughout the ecosystem of the supply chain. And the Musk's trade rent platform connects the ecosystem as shown in the figure on the right. As the global supply chain is digitized, allows the sharing of proper information and builds cooperation and trust between each shareholder. In this way, 
each stakeholder in the ecosystem that use the trade range platform can provide their roles and the functions within the ecosystem while at the same time talking corresponding benefits. However, many related parties still have many questions about the trade range platform created by IBM and Musk as follows. That is, when I join the, the platform, who drives this platform? Who owns the central database? Who gives permission to access my data? Are my data safe and protected? How do I know that the data and documents are not modified during transportation? The aforementioned doubt of many related parties to join the trade range platform are very important issues. In order to eliminate the doubts and anxiety of each stakeholder, as shown in this slide, IBM Musk are actively responding and promoting that their platform is blockchain based, therefore it is more safe and secure. The current trade lands ecosystem is very encouraging. It is collaborating with authorities in more than 10 countries to enable better information sharing, reducing manual paperwork, and easy connectivity to a national single window. In addition, it has a partnership with 15 global ocean carriers, which account for 60% of global container shipping volume. Also, parties related to intermodal frost layer have joined to maximize the value of logistics companies, 3PL and intermodal, to improve collaboration. And there are more than 600 ports and the terminals data by existing trade range members and more than 100 ports and terminal information directly included. What will be the result of the trade range platform innovating the complex container logistic ecosystem like a silo? Maybe you can find the answer in this slide. The largest client country of trade range are Singapore and the United States. And 60% of the companies using trade lands were having 1,000 or more employees. And it was found that 60% of companies were using trade lands and companies generating revenue of 1,000 plus million US dollar or more. In other words, the larger the company and the larger the revenue, the more efficient the trade rent is. Let's take a look at the video clip about the trade rents we've been talking about so far. So in my 25 years in the industry, this is a really exciting tipping point. We've achieved something that we've never been able to do before. That is of massive value. The shipping industry is a really central node of, of the global supply chain. Everybody in the world needs shipping, but they don't always realize it. The shipping industry is connected globally. It is uh, connected to sellers, suppliers, to the oceans, to the land, to the air. You can't speak about global commerce without looking at the logistics and operations that empower it. So we are part of a bigger thing. A lot of products today, uh, when you order them online or go to your local retailers, are actually delayed because of the difficulties that the supply chain has to cope right now. New dimensions, regionalizations, trade tensions, making supply chains more complex. When you move a container from one country to another, you have to go through customs, to the ports, to the terminals and to the customers. And everyone needs access to information and needs to provide information to others along that journey. It's an old industry, very much built around personal relationships and paper. It is very cumbersome and we need to become better connected as an industry. A typical transaction, you can have 20 or 30 stakeholders or actors. You will have to follow different processes, you will get your data in different formats, different fields, different timelines. As a result, we see the whole workflow suffering from inefficiencies. And these inefficiencies, unfortunately, get passed to the consumers at the end. From a digital standpoint, there's thousands and thousands of data connections between carriers, customers, vendors. And if you try to bring them together, 
to speak the same language, it's very difficult if you don't establish the rules. And I think that standardization is probably the only way to build that foundation. We need a tide to lift all boats here and really generate a different outcome end to end because the supply chain is only as strong as its weakest link. If we don't do it together as an industry, then it's never going to get adopted. And that's why Maersk, a lot of the shipping lines and IBM have joined forces to create a platform like TradeLens. TradeLens will really solve a lot of the problems that have been plaguing the global supply chain for a long time. Well, you know, in the same way the blockchain uh, brings a single source of truth, the idea behind TradeLens is to bring a single source of data. TradeLens is a platform open to the entire ecosystem that participates in the global supply chain to allow them to collaborate more effectively, but also to share data and build a level of insight across what is happening in the supply chain that has eluded us so far. We can have information from Maersk, from CMACGM, from MSC, from Hapagloid, ONE and many others. With TradeLens, you know the information that you need is available on a common platform with a shared single view and best of all, only the customer and the customer's chosen partners have permission to access the given data. What we're seeing here is not a transactional collaboration amongst market leaders. This is really an endeavor that will fundamentally change what is possible along the supply chain. We can securely share shipment information in a way that allows the industry to operate more effectively on a global scale. That's going to help us streamline the exchanges enhance our customer satisfaction, uh, lower operations cost, and increase services to cargo owners everywhere. Digitalization is no longer a question. It's going to happen, it's going to happen fast, and it's going to open tremendous possibility for the whole ecosystem. The biggest challenge today is the mindset. As with many other initiatives, it's a question of convincing people, bringing trust is very important, and demonstrating that there are easier ways to do things. What there is, is a lot of work to really realize the potential that has opened now that these barriers have been broken. The blockchain technology of TradeLand is being applied in many areas Let's look at an example applied to the fishery industry. If the customer can check the whole process from when the fisherman catches the tuna from the fishing boat until it reaches the last customer's table, this innovative process can build trust between producer and consumer and lead to more sales. Let's see how to do seafood traceability using blockchain. Meet Rich. He owns a popular seafood restaurant in Boston, Massachusetts. Rich strives to serve only the freshest, highest quality fish to his patrons, but he often has difficulty knowing exactly where it was caught, how it got to his restaurant, or if it's even the right species of fish. From ocean to table, the fish supply chain is difficult to track and usually follows this pattern. The fish is caught by a commercial fisherman in the ocean. The fisherman then sells the fish to a market, processor, or broker. A distributor then transports the fish to a restaurant or grocery store for a consumer to purchase. Rich typically only buys from one or two fish distributors that he has built a foundation of trust and personal history with. He'd like to expand his menu by adding some different kinds of seafood from other distributors, but he worries about integrity. And for good reason. He recently read a study by Oceana which showed that 33% of fish purchased from retail outlets is incorrectly labeled, and that illegal fishing represents losses between 10 to $23 billion worldwide. Rich knows that mislabeled and illegally sourced fish could hurt his customers, his restaurant's reputation, and the environment of our planet. Fortunately for Rich, and others in the seafood industry, Sawtooth Lake blockchain technology can provide an immutable record of the provenance and lineage of various goods, like fish. In combination with Internet of Things enabled sensors, Sawtooth Lake can manage the ownership and journey of fish from ocean to table.
Sensors can be attached to fish the moment they are harvested, immediately and continuously recording data, such as the location and temperature of the fish. Now, Rich can validate when and where his fish was caught and that it was stored properly on ice while it was transported. The Sawtooth Lake platform can also manage the chain of custody of fish, enabling ownership to be transferred and traded on the blockchain according to smart contracts. With Sawtooth Lake as a traceability blockchain, Rich can easily see which fishermen meet his quality standards and feels comfortable doing business with new tradesmen. When he serves up a new special to a cherished customer, he can confidently and accurately assure her it's the type of fish she ordered, it was stored at safe temperatures, when and where it was caught, how long it took to get to her plate, and the fish's name. <laughs> Just kidding. Sawtooth Lake blockchain technology can be used for a wide variety of applications from capital markets to international trade. The Internet of Things ties the physical world to the digital world, with Sawtooth Lake recording the generated data in a way that all parties can trust its accuracy and completeness. This is extremely useful for tracking perishable goods, like fish. These sensors can track many key parameters such as location, temperature, humidity, motion, shock, and tilt. This technology could be added to any package or sensitive good you're entrusting to other parties. The blockchain will ensure the data is secure and tamper-proof, so that you know what you're getting and that you get what you pay for. Sawtooth Lake creates a digital platform enabling physical traceability in a trustless world. Next, we will talk about the technology related to the fourth industrial revolution applied to ports. Major ports in the world are competing to build a completely unmanned and automated terminal to enhance competitiveness. A fully unmanned automation terminal is called a robotic port because it is controlled and operated by artificial intelligence. Port of Rotterdam of Netherlands is the world's first unmanned automation terminal opened in 1993 and leading to robotic ports by a manned terminal crane in 2015. These robotic ports have been increasing steadily since Long Beach port in the United States opened in 2016. The world number one transshipment port, Singapore, to us new port berth will be constructed with 65 fully automated unmanned terminals. It will be fully completed and opened in 2040. The following video clips will help you understand how the world's most advanced automated APM terminal is operated remotely.
Hamburg port located in the heart of the Hamburg city is the port where the technology of the fourth industrial revolution is best applied. It is in collaboration with the global IT company Cisco from 2002-2025. Hamburg Smart Port project was designed to optimize the existing port infrastructure and minimize the port stay time of logistics companies. If you, you look closely at the port of Hamburg, the following technologies are applied. The load traffic control room pulls various stream of data to predict the travel time into terminals and suggest alternative routes when traffic is heavy. In addition to traffic sensors, data sources include the schedule for bridges being raised and lowered, the situation at the container terminal and other sources as well. To decrease accident rate of ship collision, IoT sensors are applied to underbridge ship transportation means and signal is automatically transmitted when the ship approaches to the bridge, therefore the ship can pass without a stoppage. Behind the Hamburg port could become a smart port, the effective strategy was that the entire city was able to communicate quickly by using the 5G communication network. It will be helpful to watch the following video clip. The Port of Hamburg is the testing ground for 5G, the next generation mobile standard that's set to transform communications. A base station has already been installed on Hamburg's television tower over 150 meters up in the air. After six months of preparation, the project partners, Hamburg Port Authority, HBA, Deutsche Telekom and Nokia, have now launched a test bed that stretches across some 8,000 hectares of port area. The Port of Hamburg represents the European testing ground for 5G in an industrial and port setting. With our use cases in intelligent navigation, controlling of traffic lights or environmental sensor technology, we will be able to test and also set new standards. And those might be used Europe-wide or even worldwide in the future. 5G is seen as the communication standard of the future. It's an entirely new network concept that combines terrestrial and mobile networks. The antenna, the antenna signal travels all the way into the port. It has a signal range of approximately 8 kilometers and reaches the entire port area, which makes it a cost-effective technology as we don't have to lay any cables. For us, the port of Hamburg is a very interesting testing ground because we are able to test our systems in a diverse industrial environment. What's new about the new 5G standard is the so-called network slicing. It allows us to partition the mobile network into two virtual levels. One level is used to transmit vast amounts of data, for example video applications. We're testing the use of video technology to control floodgates, for instance. The other level is used to process smaller amounts of data in real time, for instance data collected by sensors or environmental data. The 5G trial program in the port of Hamburg forms part of a two-year research project. It's a unique chance for the city of Hamburg to test 5G, funded by the EU, in a business and industrial location like the port of Hamburg. As Hamburg's Minister for Economic Affairs, I am of course very happy that we're able to test the next generation of mobile network technology in Hamburg. The following video clip is applying the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution in inland transportation beyond the robotic smart ports and terminals. Truck platooning is recognized as the future of the transportation industry. In a truck platoon, multiple trucks travel at an aerodynamically efficient distance and drive cooperatively by maintaining the distance. The global truck platooning system market can be segmented based on component, technology, vehicle, and region. Research and attempts on such truck platooning 
are actively taking place in Europe and the United States, especially Singapore to us ports also is being adopted this system. From now on, we will look at the autonomous ships related to the fourth industrial revolution that can affect the shipping, shipbuilding, ocean, and fishery. Before entering, let's take a look at the future autonomous vessel imagined by Barzilla. to our future. You don't need me to remind you about the past. Things happened that made it crucial to save the planet and to make shipping sustainable. The exploitation of natural resources forced us to develop new methods in renewable energy and marine transportation. We experienced many changes and this is how shipping became clean and successful once more. Vessels were navigated by remote control and close by sailing saved lots of energy. Ships were never empty because they shared assets. Maintenance was done at sea with the help of artificial intelligence. Ships entering harbors were moored quickly by a swarm of battery-powered drones. Drones were recharged in wireless powering stations using clean energy. No black smoke and no emissions. Ship owners were no longer obliged to buy ships anymore. They leased them. And all those vessels were equipped with state-of-the-art batteries that were charged during their sail across the oceans. They offered door-to-door -door transport services. No emissions, no downtime, no capital expenses. And finally, shipping went under the surface. Goods were transported in large submerged vessels with low energy consumption. When they needed to refill, they did it from the hydrogen hubs in the ocean. Now my passengers are enjoying a cruise in a green environment, in one of the nicest places on the planet. We do this using only natural energy sources and reusing all waste on board. Now they are re-embarking and we will continue our journey. I hope you will be able to join us in our joint exploration of the future. Barzilla connects the dots to the future. The long journey for autonomous vessels is predicted by major classification society 
or organizations as shown in this slide. First of all, in 2020, remote sport will occur due to limited functions which will reduce the number of crew members. In 2025, unmanned coastal ships controlled remotely will emerge, ocean sailing ships controlled remotely will emerge in 2030, and ocean sailing ships capable of unmanned autonomous navigation will emerge in 2035. From 2020 to 2035, the sequence from the emergence of autonomous ships is the process in which the ship goes through an operation isolated from the land, goes through the process of being connected to each device, and then goes through an integrated operation in which data is gradually integrated and is operated remotely. And finally, the operation of the vessel takes place autonomously. The table below shows the main segment required in the process of going to an autonomous ship, namely support service method, connectivity, software, and shore automation, degree of onshore automation, and propulsion method. Let's take a look at the video clip about the difference between a remote operation vessel and an autonomous vessel mentioned in the free Bios slide. IMO is currently evaluating tools applicable to ships with various levels of automation for regulatory scoping for maritime autonomous surface ship. In 2017, following proposal from several member states in the Maritime Safety Committee MSC, of International Maritime Organization agreed to include the issue of maritime autonomous floating vessels on each agenda. This is a form of scoping exercise to determine how IMO equipment can introduce the safe and environmentally sound operation of marine autonomous surface ship. Existing international conventions, including the International Convention on the Safety of Life at the Sea, the Convention on the International Rules for the Prevention of Collisions, at the sea, the prevention of pollution of ships and crew training, 
certification and surveillance standards have been drawn up on the assumption that ships has, have uh, crew members. MSCC recognized that the IMO should play a leading role given the rapid technological development to introduce commercial vessels in autonomous mode operating without crew. The classification of IMO's autonomous maritime vehicle is shown in this table. First of all, it is divided into underwater and surface moving, and most of the general commercial ships are maritime autonomous surface ship, and it is divided into four types at the bottom according to autonomous level. Looking at the history of autonomous ships, the European Moonin project from 2012 to 2015 was the first visible study. The project was to evaluate whether the handmax bulk carrier could be converted into an autonomous vehicle. However, it was confirmed that the results were not realistic in terms of a commercial point of view. Next is the world's first autonomous container ship built by Norwegian fertilizer company Yara, which is scheduled to be in service sooner or later. However, the ship's service itself has been temporarily suspended due to the influence of the COVID-19. Many people are dubious about the possibility of autonomous ships. There were questions to maritime professionals, as you can see on the slide regarding the introduction of autonomous vehicles. As a result, 72% of the opinions that the time point for autonomous ships to become generalized for commercial use will be possible within 20 years. And 79% of experts said that the post autonomous ships will appear within 10 years. In this regard, let's take a look at the autonomous haulage system of Rio Tinto, an Australian mining company. The company has already been doing haulage using these self-drive autonomous turrets since 1990. Never forget it was the 27th of uh, June when I was uh, woken up at 4 o'clock in the morning. A call came from the office that we had suffered a, a cyber attack and uh, then a process started, which I'll talk a little bit about. Now, before we go into the details of the attack itself, AP Miller Mask is the largest container shipping company in the world. We transport roughly 20% of, of world trade in containers. So, so we're a very significant part of the infrastructure of making the world actually run. And um, every 15 minutes, an average, a, a, a container ship will come to a port somewhere with between 10 and 20,000 containers. Uh, so now you understand the criticality of infrastructure. We were hit by the non-patch uh, um, uh, virus. Um, in fact, that meant that we were actually collateral damage of a uh, probably a state attack uh, situation. Uh, so, uh, and um, the impact of that was that we uh, basically found uh, that we had to uh, reinstall our inf an entire infrastructure. Um, we had uh, we had to install uh, 4,000 new servers, uh, 45,000 new PCs, uh, two and a half thousand applications, and and that was done in a heroic effort um, over 10 days. Normally. I come from the IT industry, you would say that's going to take six months. It took 10 days, heroic effort, and I can only thank the employees and partners that we had on doing that. Now, imagine a company where a ship with 10 to 20,000 containers enter a port every 15 minutes, and for 10 days you have no IT. Uh, it's almost impossible to even imagine. And we actually overcome that problem with uh, human resilience. People were able to overcome. We only had a 20% drop in uh, volumes. So we managed 80% of that volume manually, basically. And customers, by the way, were great uh, contributors to overcoming that. Mm -hmm. Maybe coming to the, to the learning. This was a very significant wake-up call for an organization like AP Miller Mask. Uh, we could say a very expensive one. It cost us uh, between 250,000, uh, sorry, 250 to 300 million dollars. Um, and yet, I argue that it was a very important wake-up call. 
What did we learn? Number one, we were basically average when it comes to uh, cybersecurity, like many companies. And this was the wake-up call to become not just good, we actually have a plan to become, come in a situation where our ability to manage cybersecurity becomes a competitive advantage. That's the ambition that we have. Number two, we chose a very open dialogue around this. From day one, we were on Twitter telling about what has happened, and we have spent enormous resource on helping other companies. I think that is an important point to make because with that openness, the experience we had, other companies can have, and I believe that we need a very significant level of um, increase in our understanding of this problem. It is time to stop being naive when it comes to cybersecurity. Um, I think many companies will be um, caught if they are naive. Even size doesn't help you. I think it is uh, very important that we are not just reactive but proactive, and I think we can't be average. We've got to be the best we can. <coughs> the third and last uh, conclusion that I have is one around urgency. We are a quite technologically driven company. More than 90% of all orders come through the Internet. But the next level of uh, dependency on digital will be everything is digital. Uh, all the documents are digital. Um, the boats will be autonomous. And hence, the criticality of the infrastructure becomes even more um, urgent. And you cannot overcome with human resilience anymore. So with that in mind, um, the Internet was invented, what, in, 18, in 1989? Not with the use that we have today in mind. There is a need for a radical improvement of infrastructure and understanding and a collaboration between companies, technology companies, and law enforcement. And hopefully, our incident can be a wake-up call, not just for our company with big ambitions now, but for everyone that has anything to do with technology, which I presume is all companies in this world. One of the needs of each stakeholder who demands innovation, such as autonomous ships, because it takes a disruptive innovation to meet the expectation of each of the ship-related stakeholders, ship owner, cargo owner, shipping liners, port operators, regulators, suppliers, ship builders, and classification societies. For example, shipyards want productivity differentiation in shipbuilding. Shipping liners want reduced OPEX and increased revenue, and cargo owners want door-to-door -door visibility. Value proposition according to ship automation and autonomy can be divided into ship operation and logistics and vessel maintenance. Ship operation and logistics is again divided into fuel and energy cost and time efficiency. And vessel maintenance is divided into maintenance and time efficiency. Each innovation results in significant economic benefit such as saving energy, saving fuel or preventing losses, shortening port times, reducing OPEX, and reducing unplanned downtime. In addition to the economic benefit through value proposition, autonomous ships have the following advantages. Improve the working conditions, lower damage-related costs, reduce the crew cost, reducing the risk of piracy, new ship design and slow steaming, low structural cost, better environment, <coughs> better environment performance. What topics are being discussed in preparation for the autonomous navigation ship age? The autonomous ship technology symposium is being held annually in Europe and related topics cover a variety of perspectives from autonomous navigation technology to software, legal impact, cyber security, and maritime insurance. Looking at the type of ship's autonomy, it is classified as a slide according to the degree of automation and whether the crew is on board the ship or whether the crew is in the wheelhouse. In fact, the current situation is a form in which the crew makes a decision directly in the wheelhouse. But if all decisions are made in a situation where the crew do, does not exist at all, 
it is considered to be a perfect autonomous ship. E-navigation is the process we must go through until the advent of autonomous vehicles. According to the UK Maritime Accident Investigation Agency, more than half of marine accidents are due to navigational errors and failures, including human factors. Accidents related to navigation continue to occur despite the development and availability of numerous ship and shore-based technologies that improve situational awareness and decision-making. To reduce such accidents, e-navigation is required. E-navigation is a function of collecting, integrating, exchanging, presenting, and analyzing real-time information between ships and RAN through electronic means to enhance navigation and related services between ports in which ships navigate for real-time safety, security, and protection of the marine environment. The overall configuration of e-navigation is shown in the picture on the slide. IoT sensors attached to many equipment such as ship's main engine, auxiliary engine, boiler, VDR, radar, ACTIS, BMS, cargo crane, etc. continuously send signals such as their pressure, temperature, level, etc. to the computer server in the ship. These data are delivered to a fixed server on land in real time through highly efficient satellite communication. The ship's data stored in the onshore server can be checked for abnormality with the help of AI and feedback to the ship in real time. These series of actions meet the needs of various stakeholders mentioned above and the generated information is also donated or sold to natural parties. What kind of big data is generated within a shipping company? Those are voice data collected through IoT sensors, data transmitted from various equipment, AIS data that automatically identifies information, and various sales and market information. These data are aimed at preventing unnecessary time loss, reducing maintenance costs, and increasing energy efficiency. The big data generated from the ship's IoT sensor is ultimately used for energy saving, safe operation, and schedule management, and the fleet planning functions for fleet allocation. Service planning and chartering are used for the ship operator's decision making. In addition, technical management functions for safety operation, condition monitoring and maintenance, environmental regulation, compliance, core and propeller cleaning, retrofit and modification, and functions for design optimization in new construction are provided for ship owners' decision making. As such, it is a reality that the various stakeholders in the value chain related to ships are interested in big data generated by ships. In the future, platform providers who are the suppliers of onboard data collection, equipment, and services will continuously build data from ship operators, ship owners, crew and ship management company. The constructed data are provided to the solution provider through the ship data center, which collects, stores, analyzes, and visualizes the data. Solution providers will evolve into selling ship data to shipyard, ship equipment companies, weather information providers, insurance companies, etc., that want to advance their business. How will the big data are generated from the ship actually be used? Weather information, voyage data, and IoT data generated by each equipment of the ship are stored in the data warehouse in the form of cloud. 
The saved data are visualized in the form of a dashboard and delivered to the ship operator and ship manager and deliver performance analysis of long-term analysis or in-service performance model or various information such as business intelligence form in real time. Various big data provided by the ship is changed to dashboard, performance analysis, and business intelligence from through various processes to provide the main information to be explained from now on. As seen in this slide, it provides various information such as equipment condition, operation status, and expected ship arrival time in real time so that sim managers can perform safety management well. By doing so, it is possible to strengthen safety and support the decision-making necessary for more stable ship management. The advantage of analyzing and utilizing big data as a business intelligence tool is rapid data visualization, and sales professionals can become the best data analysts. For doing those, it is very important to standardize the data name so that the data can be used. As shown in this slide, the dashboard that can be created using business intelligence can easily implement a lot of raw data in the lower left corner in a simple form of statistics so that you can better understand the needs of sales professionals and make decisions. It is also possible to further customize defending requirements. Also, through a long-term performance ship analysis process, target ship can be picked up by visualizing the performance of ships whose performance is significantly lower among many managed ships after last repair shipyard. If there are differences in the speed value of the ship by comparing the performance data of the ship with the current value and the value at the time of a new construction, it is possible to perform underwater cleaning of the hull or propeller. We can easily check the present ship's performance by comparing the engine performance and output measured under the present sea condition and the influence of wind and waivers with the data recorded at the time of a new building. This is the last slide of the third session.